Talik, listen, like a perfect start in terms of the, the points tally. Um, really commanding position in the table, but listen, you guys aren't going to shy away from the fact that there's three massive games which will ultimately define this championship still to come. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think, you know, when you get to the, almost the midway stage of of the competition, that's where things get a uh, get tougher. You know, a lot of bumps and bruises in teams, and uh, you can either go down or you can go up. And we'll certainly be focusing on uh, improving our performances. Do you allow yourselves a bit of time to revel in the brilliance of those opening two rounds or is it just a case of review us where we can get better and let's push on? Um, I suppose you gotta you got you gotta take your learnings from, from winning as well, but um, you also gotta appreciate when you've played well in those in parts of those games and you know, we've shown what we can do um, in some of those games for, for periods but certainly hasn't been for 80 minutes and I think that's that's something we always chase and we're always after is that 80 minute performance and we're always looking to improve and um, you know I suppose the saying goes when you lose you always say oh we'll learn from this but we, we're very much the same when we win we want to learn as much as we can from the games and um, see where we can improve in, in, in areas where we can improve um, even from those wins. Is that difficult? Like, th does that need a kind of a forensic approach to look at? Like, pe people look at the set piece, people look at aspects of the game, and say th this is justifiably the form team in the world at the moment. But like, you guys forensically look at it to try and find where is the next level we can go to. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I think that's just a credit to the coaching staff in here and the management um, with the mindset they've given us in terms of. Uh, you know, breaking down every part of the game and, you know, even when it goes well, seeing what part of it actually didn't go well and trying to improve on that. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of game that, you know, to people outside they may not pick on, um, but we're picking up on every single little detail in here that we can to to try and improve our performances e each game. How personally, how hard are you on yourself or how much do you study your own performances? Yeah, I think everyone in here is is hard on themselves and uh you know you you want to you want to improve yourself but you want to be the best version of yourself i suppose and put out your best performances so you're going to have to review yourself in detail and um see where you've gone wrong or what you've done well and you know either replicate what you've done well going forward or improve on what you've done wrong and it's important and people talk about culture it's important to have that culture where you know you can go to the other second rows or back rows and say listen I've noticed this and equally mm. you're open to them coming to you and saying you're not quite on the mark here <laughs> yeah 100% look the way uh, you kind of have to have that in team environments you have to be willing to help each other because we're here for the team we're not we're not here for ourselves um, you know that's that's what we're about we're we're here to wear the jersey and represent the jersey as best we can and um, selection isn't down to me so if I'm not selected um, that's on me to play better and improve so that I can get into the team but I can certainly help as best I can to ensure that the team is putting in their best performance. So just say a, a game like Italy where there's rotation of the squad and, and you're not involved can you watch that as a fan or do you watch that forensically in terms of knowing the plays knowing what's expected and seeing how the 23 involved yeah. live up to what's expected? Yeah, I suppose a bit of both, you know, everything's not going to go perfectly, but um, we can't watch the game and not enjoy it by looking at it like that. Well, for certainly review it uh, forensically, as you say, and uh, see 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 what, where we've gone right and where we've gone wrong. But, you know, at the time, you got to try and um, enjoy, uh, enjoy it as well. People used to talk about the back row as being the depth area in Irish rugby. We now look at the second row and the competition that exists there, but, <laughs> like, it's... You know, it's it's a bounty of riches for Andy and the coaching staff to have to pick from. Yeah, look, the second row is an incredibly strong position um, in here. You know, in terms of what we have here in the squad at the moment, and um, some of the guys who've also missed out in the squad. Um, but you know, we're, we're we're very lucky in this country. Um, you know, in Ireland as a whole, because we have so much depth in so many areas. Um, from everyone who's in this squad and some lads who've missed out, there's a lot of lads who could just step in and uh, fill in. Um, so, you know, it's a credit to all the provinces as well and the work they're doing. 
we people often look at the 23 and look at the, the caps beside players and, and say that someone is new to the environment and it ignores the fact that the coaching staff have a lot of people in here who are exposed mm. to the environment to learn what's expected of you and probably Joe McCarthy probably fits into that realm of someone who's been around here a lot more than people might anticipate but has it surprised you the impact that he in particular has made because he he is one of those players that everyone is talking about at the moment has it surprised probably not surprised me because of I've been training with him for so long um you know he's certainly stepped into that jersey incredibly well in the last uh, sp uh you know specifically in the last two games um you know he's doing it during the world cup as well when he got his chance um, and certainly he's been playing incredibly well for Leinster but in terms of being in here he's actually been in this environment quite a lot um, I specifically remember his first training session I couldn't get over how, how good he was in that session and uh, I don't know what age he was at the time he could have been just 20 years of age or something um, so you could tell he was he was going to be um, a serious athlete going forward and you know he's much like all of us never going to be the finished art uh, article like myself um he can improve and uh, you know sky is no limit for him and it's about that mindset as well to come in here be ready to hit the ground running but be ready to to buy into the standards that are expected yeah exactly you can't you know yeah that's that's what it's about it's about you know uh getting up to the standards of of, of this team and he's done that incredibly well he, he's learned fast which is uh, a big thing, you know, when new lads do come in here. Um, if they're not picking things up quick enough, you're probably not going to see them. Um, and he's he's certainly uh, been all over that stuff. Do, how do you like? Obviously, everyone enjoys it, and, and there's a real there's a brilliant culture. And those of us who are lucky enough to see you guys when you're yeah. not in the line of battle get to see the camaraderie that exists and that's been built over the course of the last couple of years. Do you maybe appreciate it somewhat more because, I won't say, don't want to say you're catching up on lost time, but for a lot of times you probably didn't get the crack within Irish rugby that people said you deserved. Like, do, um, do you understand where I'm coming from in terms of enjoying it that bit more because of yeah, well, it, it probably came to you later than a lot of people would have expected? In terms of myself? Yeah. or Yeah, I suppose it has. You know, you look at you look at some of the some of the younger lads and there's lads in here 22 21 23 um i certainly wasn't anywhere near <laughs> an irish jersey at that age um so it certainly makes you appreciate the this time for sure you know i probably the few times uh, i have reflected on it and i've uh, i've counted myself very lucky to be in this environment and when i have been injured or i've been out of it um that's probably the toughest time because you know you're missing out on such an enjoyable experience certainly helps that we're winning it certainly helps that we're playing really like really enjoyable rugby um you know when you're you're out there on the field you're involved a lot you get to be involved you get your hands on the ball a lot um with the way we play which which obviously makes the whole experience more enjoyable and then you know the group of lads in here is as well like everyone everyone gets on incredibly well and it's just it's a joy to be in this environment and like you touched upon the, there's guys who are lucky enough to be involved on st patrick's weekend last year there's guys that have multiple championships and grand slams under their belt but then there's a generation of fellas who want to be on the pictures that are on the wall around the hpc that the, mm. the hunger is phenomenal yeah and i think that that hunger comes from the success that irish rugby have had in the past and um you know when you see we talk you know we've spoken about before in terms of about inspiring a nation and that's what we want to do we want to inspire people to want to wear the jersey to want to go out and watch us um and i think that comes from winning those championships and um that's certainly what we hope to do again th this time around um wales this weekend like it, it's whereas perhaps we're evolving they've had a bit of a revolution in terms of a very very young squad so is there an element of the unknown about what type of welsh team will arrive in dublin this weekend yeah for sure and i think you know they've they've shown glimpses of what they can do on the last their last two games um some players where we know we may not have played much rugby against um but uh you know i think it's they've nothing to lose either you know i think 
it's us under the pressure a little bit in terms of expectations um, but we'll obviously relish in that um, and we, we, uh, we're looking forward to the challenge for sure. Opposition analysis is obviously such a big part of, of any game but in a week like this is it like 70% about what you're capable of yourselves and 30% about what the opposition will bring or are you largely or predominantly focused on the skill that exists within this squad and the capacity to improve on performances? Yeah, there's a bit, there's both obviously. Um, I think for us, we focus on ourselves an incredible amount because especially around attack, um, we know what we want to do and we know how we, we need to do and we're always looking to improve there and what we can do to improve. Um, defensively, obviously, you have to study them a bit, bit more because they'll play different to how France played and um, how Italy played. So, you know, you're obviously going to focus on how they're, they're playing and what we need to expect in terms of how, how to defend them. Uh, obviously, you, you've been asked the obvious questions about the potential to have ever played in the Welsh Chairs, and I know you've, you've put that to, to bed, but like people might not realise it's a divided house this week. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> my, wife is her, my wife is Welsh, yeah. Um, uh, her, her folks would be over, but... Um, in fairness, they've they've certainly uh, shown all the support they can possibly show for me. They uh, they I don't know if they'll wear the green, but they'll be shouting for me anyway if I'm involved. Um, my wife always supports me. Um, you know, even my nephews over there, they've they've all bought the blue scrum caps and everything, so they've uh, shown incredible support for me. Um, but yeah, listen, you want to beat them this weekend, mm -hmm. and that's obvious, but. I, I've no doubt you're very aware of what you owe to Welsh rugby or the role mm. that Welsh rugby has played in, in you ultimately fulfilling mm. your your ambitions to become such a mainstay of this Irish team. Yeah, and I I'll, I guess I'll forever be in uh, Scarlet's debt for that. Um, you know, put Wayne Pivak making a punt on me at a time in my career where uh, things weren't looking so positive and. Um, you know, I, uh, when I was there, I gave everything I had for for that club. I loved every minute of it. Um, but with the opportunity to come back and play for Munster and with the potential of playing for Ireland, I couldn't really turn that down. From a personal point of view, how great is the hunger to get back on the pitch this week? Because, like, you look at your stats from the French game, mm. like joint seconds, nine breaks, second in carries, eleven rooks, one. Like, I, I could go on and on and on. But like, you hit this championship running from a personal mm. point of view. Yeah. This is an incredibly enjoyable game to be part of. You know, sometimes when you're in a game, something some things just works. And obviously, uh, Jack threw me a great pass for that try. It was um, nice to get over. Nice to get over for for a try in the Six Nations. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that game. And I think that's the main thing is that I, I'm enjoying my rugby, um, especially especially in here. Um, and I've, I feel fit, so I just uh, I'm obviously dying to get back out there and uh, do it all over again. Just two final questions. Um, there, there's always a tangent and there's always a side story, and yeah. the atmosphere at the Aviva seems to have become the side story <laughs> for this championship. Um, how important is that support, and how aware are you of a group of putting a performance in on the pitch that will facilitate people in the stand to? turn it back into maybe a more hostile environment than perhaps we've seen on one or two occasions? Um, yeah, I suppose, you know, the better we play, the the better it is for the crowd, I suppose. Um, but although saying that, the tighter games are, the crowd also get into the games because, um, you know, if they're, if they're landslide victories, it's, it's probably not so enjoyable for crowds either. Um, but for us, it's just about playing well. You know, it's... Um, we want to put on a we want to put on a good show for for all the Irish fans and um, hopefully the, if they're enjoying it they'll uh, be in full voice. Um, you're obviously a leader within this group and this dressing room. That's the way the other people, the other players talk about you. Yeah. Could I be talking to the next monster captain? <laughs> you know, I love to ask Wig that. Um, look, if it was if it was offered to me, I'd bite bite your hand off. Of course, I would. But you know, there's um, an incredible amount of leaders within within the monster squad too, and. Uh, you know, whoever we goes with will be will be getting right behind.